Michael, thanks so much for joining us. A fascinating note that you wrote about uh, these numbers and also that that earnings call with the executives. Lay out for us how you see the lower than expected guidance for the first quarter, giving you insight into the rest of the year. Okay, thanks for having me, by the way. Um, it's mystifying because they talk so much about the great content slate in the fourth quarter and there was no carryover, right? It's, it's, it just says to me, it's the risk of the model. Um, it relies on so much new content. And then into that also, the idea of the price increase, but perhaps slowing down growth and maybe creating an upper limit on pricing power, right? So I think that guide on first quarter sub ads and then margin, that was a big shock, obviously. And what we don't know is with the year starting off so slowly on subscriber growth, how 2022 will end up, right? And Typically, first quarter is a strong quarter. Second quarter is a weak quarter. So, Julia, just bring this doubt about like where 22 will be on subscriber growth and revenues and ultimately long-term margins. So there's a lot of risk in what we just learned about the first quarter that I would say is still not even in the stock. Even though it's down a lot, there's still probably more risk in the stock than people realize at this point. Interesting. You know, it, it was it was fascinating to hear Ted Sarandos, co-CEO, yesterday talk about how he thinks that people are going to start to realize that Netflix has one great big movie launching every week, and they start to see that as a key part of the value proposition. And yet in your note, you talk about the rapid decay of the value of content because people are just going through it so quickly. How do you see Netflix's content investment changing? Are they going to have to spend even more than they're already planning to spend? I saw an estimate of $19 billion this year. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So I think what's happening and why they're pivoting the film is that when you put out a series, those shows get consumed when they get, they get binged in a night. And when you put out a series, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of risk to it. You don't know the next Squid Game or Stranger Things. You just don't. Those shows just get thrown against the wall and they pop, they pop. But with film, you can pay up for movie stars. And the things that work, and they called out, have all big name stars. So I think what they may be realizing without saying it is, the only way we can actually like you know create sticky content that doesn't decay in a night, uh, it doesn't fail, is by paying up for for big names, Julia. So I think to me that's you know that's kind of the story here is that the fade on new content is so high, and it seems like almost like a random walk. What works, what doesn't work. That film is probably a safer but more expensive way to build a model, right? But the movies have to be good, right? You have to even though you have the big names, you have to be good, and that's. Film business, as you know, is also hit or miss. Michael, here's what I don't get at this point, and it has to do with how Netflix should be valued. When does leverage come to this model? At some point, do they have to spend less on content and they can just sort of reap a benefit, like Disney style? Since you got Mickey Mouse, you don't have to reinvent Mickey Mouse every quarter or spend a billion dollars on Mickey Mouse. Mickey's just Mickey, and people come to the parks and wear the ears, and he's, he's printing cash. When does Netflix's Mickey Mouse happen? Well, John, the question is, does streaming allow for the next Mickey Mouse, right? Like, is Squid Game just so third quarter that there's no collectibles for, you know, for Squid Game? Like, that's, my, that's been my concern all along, is that I just think that the streaming model doesn't allow for those franchises to be built, right? There's just a quick, quick decay. And if I was a media company, to your point, I would lean in, as Disney has, into Marvel, Pixar, Lucas, because... Those franchises have already been built, right? So I think your question goes to the heart of this transition and whether or not streaming is a good model versus the linear model. That's always been my concern. So if you start slowing down content spending when everyone else is raising content spending, by nature, the risk is that you'll have less hits, right? So when people say, hey, the bull cases, they'll spend less on content and drive higher prices. Well, how's that, how's that possible, right? When everyone else is spending right. more money on content, you know? So...